friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop with yet another little different project. I do these different things every once in a while just to amaze myself. <laughs> so what is the different project? Well, there you go, right there. It's a knife. And this was a knife given to me by Superfan Eddie. And I absolutely love this knife. I really do. It's the perfect size. I love the easy opening. I'm not crazy about how you have to close it because you have to reach in and pull this thing down and close it. But that's a minor thing. It's not that big a deal. But at least it locks open. So you can just pull this little lever right here. Pops right open. Just awesome. One-handed. It only has the one blade. Has a little belt clip here, which I don't use. I just keep it in my pocket. It's small enough, yet large enough, to do just about everything. Uh, it's large enough to skin a whole deer. You know, I mean, it's it's just got the right size thing. So what is it that the project would be about then? You know, making a sheath or something? No. Nope, 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 nope. I like everything about this knife, everything, except the fact that it won't hold an edge for nothing. I mean, like seriously, it will not hold an edge at all. It sharpens so easy, you can get it razor sharp, just trim and hair, as a matter of fact, it's that's sharp right now, just, just shaves hair right off your arm, just no problem at all. But it won't stay that way very long at all. So what's the problem with that? Well, you know, when they make these blades out of uh, different kinds of materials like a stainless steel and different things like that, they just don't hold the edge that the old carbon steels did. Now, carbon steel will rust much easier and all that, but those things really hold an edge. So what is the project then? Well, if it works, you'll see this video. If not, you won't never know nothing about any of this. <laughs> We're going to try to make a new blade just exactly like this blade, but make it out of a steel that'll hold an edge. So what kind of steel would that be? Well, I'm going to try a file. Let's see if it works. Now, I have no idea how hard this is going to be. So this is all just by guess and by gosh. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this thing apart I have a little tiny star bit here. I don't even know what size it is. It's very tiny. T something, but it's really small. A T8. But it does fit that. Hopefully they're all the same. Oh, they're not. This was the bigger one. It's a T8 up here, but these other ones are even smaller. Well, that's okay. I've got the little tiny deal here. My guess is that they went down two sizes. Let's see if that's true. Yep, I'm right. This is a T6, according to this. So we'll put a T6 in here. You're not going to stop me that easy. So this is all springing apart on me now. So this will either work or I'll have a disaster. One of the two. Probably no room for anything in between. I'm going to go ahead and keep the screws in the scales there, just so I don't lose them. I'll set those aside. Here's what it looks like, and there's the spring that popped out, I guess. So now I'm going to have to figure out where that went and how to put that back. <laughs> and I don't have any idea, I'll be honest. Oh, it looks like it went right there. So I, maybe it's not that tough. Yeah, that's probably where it went. Got to keep track of that little jobber. <laughs> didn't expect that exactly. I thought it would have a different kind of a spring. I didn't expect that kind of spring. What I want to do is just get the blade itself out and then trace the blade exactly and make a blade exactly like it, just out of a different steel. And when I say exactly like it, I actually have something in mind. I may try to make it just a fuzz bigger, but only a fuzz, because just because I can, you know, it like there's a little bit more room here, and I might make it just a little bit bigger, but not much. It'll be almost identical. This is turning, but it's not coming loose, and I'm not exactly sure why. 
you know you don't know what you don't know until you know it and I don't know what I don't know right now so I'm putting on the close-up glasses and seeing if I can figure out why that's not coming apart I have a feeling it's just a tight fit that's all don't think it's any threaded thing looks like a lot of parts are gonna fall out of here though <laughs> oh man there's another little spacer there that's uh, going to eat my lunch if I lose that. So I'm hoping that uh, this video will help me put all this back together too, by the way. <laughs> oh my goodness. All these parts coming apart here. Well, that came apart and it, I didn't really need that apart. I need this apart. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wonder why that won't come off of there. There it is. It just was a tight fit, I guess. Now that's all I really wanted off of there. I want to make an exact copy of that. Do you think I can do it? Well, I don't know for sure. But like I said, if I can't, you'll never know anything about this. I got to thinking, you know, I'm always a big believer in doing the easy thing first. Well, an easy thing would be to try to retemper this blade. Then I wouldn't have to make a new one. Now, I, I'm telling you for sure, I know it doesn't hold an edge now. It just doesn't. It, it dents easy. It's just soft. So, let's go over to the dark side, see if we can retemper this. Then I wouldn't have to make a new one. I don't have a heat treating oven. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have the proper oil. I don't have anything correctly. That's okay. I'm still going to give it a shot and we're going to see how well it turns out. I know uh, the proper way to do it, but if you don't have the proper stuff, then you just do what you can. Bright orange, and then I quenched it in this oil and shook it around. And some of you are already saying that it wasn't safe because I didn't have enough, you know, handle here. The nail never got hot, and I was pointing the torch away. I'm, you know, I'm used to doing these kinds of things, so it's not like it's your everyday flunky doing this. It got bright red or orange. I'm not, I'm so colorblind, I couldn't tell you, but it was bright orange or something. I dunked it in here. Now I'm just going to check it and see if it got hard and we'll know it got hard by the fact that it uh, it won't be uh, fileable. I didn't have a lot of oil there. It would have been a lot better if I'd have had a lot more oil to cool it off a lot faster. So it discolored it just a little bit, not too much. But let's see if it got harder. Let's just test it right here at the vise. I'll take a uh, small flat file to it. No, it doesn't seem like it's hard. It's, in fact, it's uh, still pretty soft, actually. Yeah, that didn't do it. We'll heat it up again and we'll cool it off in water and see if that does it. If that didn't do it, then I don't know what will. So, you know, we'll just have to make a new blade if that didn't harden it. This wouldn't be tempered, I understand that. This is just to see if it actually hardened. So let me see. Nope, it didn't, didn't harden it at all. Still just as soft as it can be. Well, maybe. It might have hardened it a hair, but not enough to care about. It's still, the file just still cuts it, no problem. I don't know if you can see there how the file's cutting that edge right off. This is just not hardenable. It's just a soft piece of metal. That's why it doesn't hold an edge. We're gonna fix that. So I don't throw pieces of steel away. This is a broken old horse, horse shoeing rasp, or at least that's what we call it. Uh, other folks use them for other things. Fellow YouTuber out there in uh, Montana who builds the wagons and the wagon wheels and things, he's using these all the time as just a wood rasp and there's nothing wrong with that. But my dad, growing up on, with all the horses and everything, he used them for horseshoeing. And this is probably one of his old 
files and rafts that was broken and I just throw it in my iron pile and sometime when I need a piece of hard steel I've got one and this will be just about perfect for making that new knife blade if you tried to bend this it would not bend it would just break so we need to soften it first thing and that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna let it cool down very slowly and that should take the temper out of this so let's do that first I'm going to just heat up the top half of this. Okay, I got a pretty even heat on that. And I'm just going to let that cool down very slowly by itself. That will take all the temper out of it, or at least most of it, and it'll be very soft. And we should be able to drill a hole through it and do all the things that we need to do to shape it to make that blade. It's been about 30 or so minutes, maybe a little more. It's still just barely warm, but it's not hot at all. So I'm going to go ahead and start shaping this. I think what I'm going to do is grind off these teeth first, smooth, so that at least I can start with a smooth piece of uh, metal and then mark off the shape of the blade I need to cut out. This is not a very good setup for filming especially, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what I'm doing. The lights are being blocked right now because I have a big project in the shop. I have a horse trailer in here and all the light is kind of being blocked from getting over here. So I set up some temporary lights to shine on the grinder a little bit. I realize it's not very good, but it's the best I can do under my conditions. So we're gonna grind this off, at least knock off this real rough surface and try to get a little bit of smoothness going on here. Well, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit on you there. After grinding on the regular grinder, uh, it was getting it done, but then I brought it over to the belt sander here in the wood shop and laid it on the belt sander, and that flattened it off quite a bit more. This side's almost gotten rid of all of the marks, as you can see. There's just the teeniest hint of marks in places. On this side, you know, it's some fairly deep dimples in there from these gouges. Okay, I've got a little bit to play with, but I have a feeling some of the marks are going to still be in there when we're down to the proper thickness. So, with that being said, I'm going to switch modes and I'm going to try to uh, mark this out so that we can cut out the shape of this knife. And I'm going to try to mark it up here fairly close to the edge so that I don't have too much grinding to do. So there's the rough blade. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this. I'm going to try cutting away the bulk of it with my uh, metal bandsaw. I don't know if it'll cut it. It might, it might not. I've, like I said, I feel like I've softened it, but I don't really know for sure if it's that much softer than it was originally or not. We'll go give it a shot and see what happens. Hi. Mark the holes that I'm going to drill in this with a, a little punch, and they seem to punch okay. I think the metal is soft enough to drill. I've got an extra hard bit in this, and hopefully it'll drill. So here we go. Looks like it's gonna drill okay. I'm gonna get some oil. Okay, we're gonna to go to the smaller bit now and see if we can drill the other hole. Okay, we've got the little 1 16th inch bit in there now, so let's see if that works. Well, I believe that worked just fine. So obviously I've got the temper out of this, otherwise there'd have been no way to drill it. I do not have any idea if this is gonna cut this or not, but we're gonna give it a shot, so here we go. Got it mostly cut out to the shape. I gotta trim this little bit right in here, but it's getting a little hot to hold, so I'm gonna go cool it off.
That is not a bad rough out at all. It's pretty close. We'll go back to the desk now and just kind of mark it up to see how close we are. Well, I don't know if I'm just lucky or good, but you can see I've got both drill bits down through both holes. And so they line up, and that's just amazing in itself pretty much when you're drilling them freehand like that. You know, with those marked like that, I can more accurately mark off the black and know how much I want to cut off. And like I said, I'm actually going to leave a little length on this blade. I'm just going to smooth it out so that it kind of matches what's there. Plus I'm adding just, oh, I don't know, not quite a quarter inch of length, but, but almost because there was, you know, quite a bit of room there. I think I could leave some length. The worst case scenario, I could always get rid of that. I'm going to just do this off camera. I'm just going to go over to grinders, sanders, different things, and just knock off those little black marks, or up to the little black marks, I guess I should say. And I might even resort to a hand file, but if I do that, I'll show you what that looks like here at the, at the bench. I'm kind of amazed how well it's working out. I've got the two blades clamped together right now, and so I'm hand filing the new blade, of course, down to the old original blade. Pretty close to the same shape here. I'm trying to get it exact because I don't know how critical that's going to be when you get into that closing mechanism and all that. I imagine it's fairly critical for it to work really well. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just filing off the stuff that's too big. That's really what it amounts to. Well, I've turned it in the vise here and I feel like I've got it matching up almost exactly except right back here at this top back edge and I'm going to work on that right now and see if I can't bring that down. I'm going to take the bits back out again. This is really working out better than I was expecting as far as shaping it goes. It's really not taking very long. I would say I've been working on it about, oh, total of 45 minutes maybe. That looks pretty darn good to me. I don't see how I could do much better. Uh, I don't know if you can see it up there or not, but I've probably moved it a little bit now, but I really filed it to where it looks just about identical. There could probably be a little difference, but man, it would be very minimal. I think it'll work. Now I'm going to have to um, grind this profile of the, of the cutting edge into this. Before I do that though, I think while it's still flat, I'm going to run it through my thickness sander and take it down to the thickest part of this. Well, my friends, I'm going to push this thing, or attempt to. I've never really done metal on my thickness sander much before. I made myself a custom push stick. Uh, this fits the tang of this really good and will push it through there without any problem. I don't think it should be a problem anyway, so... The one thing I didn't anticipate was how hot that got after just pushing it through one time. My goodness, it was hot. I mean, I knew it would get hot, don't get me wrong, but I didn't think it would get that hot. It was on fire hot. <laughs> it was really, really, really hot. So I have to be more careful with that. Let's go ahead and try another little pass and see what happens. Well, the other one measured right at 110, 111 thousandths, and that's what this is right now, 110, 
hundred and just depends how you measure it. Hundred well I got hundred and nine there now, nine and a half, ten. So that's close enough. Uh, nobody's going to get down to a half a thousandth or even a thousandth and care about that. That's pretty darn good. Now it's just time to put the grind to it and get get a blade shape on this thing. If the video turned out well over there at the thickness uh, sander, you saw me sand this down to 110 thousandths, which is basically what this is. Right now I'm getting 112 on this on the old one, on the original. When I measured it earlier, I got less. So anyway, on this one I'm getting 110, 11, 10 and a half. So we're a couple thousandths smaller, I guess you'd say, than this one. Though it doesn't look like it, this one feels and looks much heavier, partly because I left this one just a teeny bit longer as you can see. And like I said, I can always grind that off. But it, it seems to me like it will work in the, in the handle, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it that way. I figure I might as well just get an extra eighth inch there, whatever I can get out of it. Pretty darn cool. I like it so far. Now I'm going to more or less draw the profile of this blade on here for the for the uh, sharpening. Just kind of going to just eyeball it and draw it on here, I think. I may have to clamp this on with a vice grips. I think that's what I'll do is I'll clamp a vice grips on here and then go to the grinder and just get that as ground as close as I can by eye. Well, I probably should have quit while I was ahead. I had it looking better uh, before I tried to touch it up even more on the, on the belt sander. Just using the grinder, I had it looking pretty good, really. <laughs> I should have just stopped there, but uh, it's still going to be fine. I can hand file the rest of it, I think, and get it where I want it to be. I'm going to do a lot of cleanup uh, on this. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it yet. I want to uh, file these blades and get most of the marks out of them. And I don't know if I can do that with draw filing like this. Because I had it kind of hollow ground on the, on the grinder, so that's not really going to work very well. I don't know. It's going to be kind of tough. To get it where I really am happy with it again. I really had it looking good on the grinder and then I kind of messed it up. I'm really not very happy with it now compared to the way I had it. Although it doesn't look horrible, it's just not as good as it was. I think I may just have to do some hand sanding and just clean the blade up that way. So here's how I'm sanding it, and I've just got this little sanding block. I've got, this is like 220 wet or dry, and I'm just trying to knock out the rough parts of that first. You know, sandpaper really, 220 sounds like it's coarse, but you know, it knocks out a lot of material fast and leaves it pretty darn smooth. And then you can go to the next polishing grit, so this is actually working pretty well. You know, if I went to a finer grit first, it would take a lot longer to sand this down. I'm not going to show a lot more of this because it's just going to be lots and lots more of this very same thing. Sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding until I'm satisfied. So I'll show you what it looks like when I'm satisfied. I gotta be honest, I'm getting a little anxious. I think I'm just about done with this blade. It's, you know, you always want them a little better. This is the original. Of course, it's a little discolored after trying to heat treat it. And this one here is just a hair fuzz bigger. And that might be a problem. I might end up having to readdress that. But if I do, I will. You know, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I think I'm going to go ahead and heat treat this right now and get it over with because it's late at night. I'd like to go ahead and put this thing back together tonight if it'll let me. We're back over here at the fancy heat treating facility. I'm going to turn this bright red and then dip it into oil. Trying to heat it evenly. 
body and heat the heavy part of the blade first. Okay, so I've got it all cooled off here. Now the test is, will this file? Uh, actually it does, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's probably harder than the other one, but it still feels like it files to me. I'm going to try it with water, cool it off with water, and see if that'll do it. I'd like to see it get pretty much glass hard before I temper it back. All right, we're going to try this once more. Let's see if that made it harder. Um, honestly, I'm not so sure. Not quite so sure why I'm not getting it hard. I don't know. I'm going to go with that for right now. I, you know, I'm not even going to temper it back because I can still file this. I'm going to just see how this plays out for a day or two and, and see if it holds an edge and that sort of thing. A little disappointed it didn't work better than that. I've done this same thing many times before and had much better results than I'm having today. I don't know why I'm not getting the better results today. Maybe I'm just not cooling it fast enough. Maybe I'm not using enough water. You can put your thoughts in the comments. I'm always uh, willing to learn. Maybe I'll, you'll hit on something I hadn't thought of. I probably should have had the camera on, but I went ahead and uh, I first just sanded this up back up a little bit, cleaned it up. I didn't take off this weird finish. It almost looks like Damascus steel, the way it kind of bubbled up there and everything. And I kind of left that. I think that looks kind of cool, so I just left that. I'll sharpen it later. It's not sharp yet. I mean, it's actually got a little bit of an edge, even though I didn't plan that. That just kind of happened. I mean, you could cut yourself on it right now, I think. I'm really not too sure whether or not it's going to hold an edge, but it, I don't think it could be any worse than the other one. I'm almost sure it's better than that already. It was not easy to sand, I'll say that, so that would give me some idea that it's fairly hard. I have not tried this yet, so this is all... You know, I'm only putting it back together. I don't know if it's going to lock and open and all that yet. <laughs> it's all going to be a surprise to me. So here we go. There, So there it is. It's open and it locked. I'll be darned. It's locked. Open. Now if I can close it. Yeah. Push that down and close it. It's a little tight. Doggone. The blade is a little sticking out a little bit. I don't know. Maybe I didn't put something together right. Or, oh, I see what it is. It's this thing here. It's not filed enough. Um, it's holding the blade open a little bit, as you can see there. Well, that's not too bad, though, considering all the things I did. <laughs> it's a little tight. I have to say it's just a little tight. So I'm going to have to open, loosen that up a little bit or something. Oil it, maybe. I'm not really sure what, what the problem is there. But in order for this to close, I can see right now that this is going to have to be filed out a little bit more. And then I think we got it. Well, there you go, my friends. Looks like a factory-made knife to me. It opens up. It doesn't quite open all the way to the full lock spot with the finger as easily as it used to. But I have a feeling that's just wearing in and getting it loosened up. It'll probably be okay with that. It locks in place. You can close it. And it closes all the way to the point there, as you can see. And the long point that I put on there is just nice. It's just a little bit longer than it was uh, without increasing the size of the knife. So to me, that was perfect. I've got a little oil coming out here that I'm just keep wiping off as I open and close it. But uh, other than that, I think it's pretty darn fine. Now I just got to sharpen it up. When it comes to sharpening, I'm 100% old school. This is the fine uh, stone already, but I think I can probably get away with that because I think we're real close to an edge already. Uh, I may be wrong and may be a little optimistic on that, but we'll see. You know, some of you may not agree with the way I do this, but I've, I've, I've done it so long, it's just like second nature to me, and it should grab an edge here pretty quickly, I think. I...
Eh, I doubt it's... It won't shave back here, I'm, I'm sure of that. Up here it might, on the, on the point end it might. Um, truthfully, just barely. It, yeah, you can probably see the hair there on the, on the blade maybe, or maybe not. I don't know if you can I tip it up and you can see the hair. It does shave, but not, not real good yet. So I'll just work it down a little bit more like that and get it just right. And then we'll go a day or two and I'll find out whether or not this thing actually holds an edge now. I certainly don't think it'll be any worse. You know, I, I didn't temper it back because it didn't seem to be that hard. Um, I'm not quite sure why it didn't get hard. Maybe those horseshoe and rasps aren't as hard as other files. Maybe that's part of the problem. I don't know. I built knives out of files before and they've done real well and I was always able to temper them no problem at all get them glass hard and then peel them back a little bit. It's late this evening. I may just call it quits right there. It's pretty close to being sharp. I can tell you it's harder to sharpen already. I can tell that. So that makes it means to me that it's a little harder than that other knife blade. That other knife blade, you could sharpen it in no time at all. Just a couple strokes and you had it razor sharp. This is sharpening, but it's taking a little more effort. So I'm already convinced this is a better blade than what we had. Well, good morning, friends. It's the next morning, and I couldn't be much happier with this knife. You can see a little pattern in there. That was from when I heat treated it and dipped it in the oil. And I thought, I'm just going to leave that pattern in there. I spent a little more time last night after I left the shop. I just, after I took my shower, sat in my easy chair, I just uh, honed the knife quite a bit while I was just sitting there, and it's pretty darn sharp. It took a long time to get it sharp because I think this is quite a bit harder steel. So, you know, the original blade, not so hard. I just, it just wouldn't hold an edge at all. You can see here how similar they look. Uh, this one is actually just a little bit longer. I'm just going to say it's 3 16 of an inch longer, so it's almost a quarter inch longer than the, the original, which is perfectly fine with me since it closes up perfect. Um, you know, it's still completely contained. It, there's no sharp point there or anything. It's all down in, inside, just exactly like I wanted it. It flips out just like the original. No play in it at all. Perfectly tight. Couldn't be much happier. Some people will watch this video and say, boy, that was a lot of work for, you know, you could just go out and buy a different knife. Yeah, I could. But, you know, unless you spend a ton of money, you're going to get another knife like this that doesn't stay sharp. And, you know, I love this particular knife. I think it's just, it just fits me perfectly. It's small. It fits in my pocket real good. Um, but yet it's got a big enough blade to do something. And it opens with one hand, which is awesome. Like I said, the only thing I'm not crazy about is how you shut it. But most, a lot of them shut that way. So it's nothing unique to this knife. I also didn't point out to you that I left the serrations. I don't know if it'll focus, but I, yeah, you can see it. I left the serrations up on top of there. And those are the actual file serrations that were in the file. So I left those there. I thought that was kind of cool. And yeah, I just, I couldn't be happier. Um, time will tell whether this will hold an edge much better, but I believe it will. That type of steel generally doesn't dull real easy. But you know, it was the first time that I couldn't get the heat treat to really work. I've done that same exact process, just like I did it there a bazillion times. And every single time it's always worked. It just didn't work this time, and I'm not quite sure why. Although, I still think this is pretty hard. I, it, it took quite a bit of work to sharpen it, and especially to hone it. I don't know. I haven't tried this yet, so let's just try it. If I hold it like this, I'm sure it'll cut it, but... You know, it's, it's really sharp. It really is. Just like that, you can just see. We'll know in a day or two whether or not it was worth all the effort. If for some reason I have to revisit it, 
I'll let you know in another video. You know, it's the little things in life that make you happy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.